Welcome to Heroes of Cosplay Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty B. And this week, we're talking about why your following and its number doesn't matter. But before we get into the show, I would just like to say if you have any questions or you're looking for a shout out or you would like to know more or about being on the show, please send me an email at Scotty B, S C O T T Y B, at H O C S podcast.com. Again, that's Scotty B at H O C S podcast.com, or DM me at Scotty B the brand on Instagram, or find me on Vero at Scotty B official. And yeah. So that's um, that's what I wanted to say. Again, if you have questions, want to be on the show, or if you have comments, concerns, or anything else, you can always find me online and we can talk. So why you're following doesn't matter. And when I say that, this is, I guess, a little bit of a rant. Um, and not because I don't have a very large following. That has nothing to do with this. Who listens to my podcast and how many people I have following me and how many people I follow doesn't really make too much of a difference. I'm not in the space right now to have thousands of people following me, and I don't have an offer per se right now anyways, which I'm working on in 2020, to bring you some more exclusive content and content in a way that will really help you build your brand, build your cosplay, and just be able to do a lot more in terms of marketing, reach, and having a space that works for you inside of the cosplay community in 2020. So I'm very excited about that, but this isn't really a podcast designed to get really pitchy. So what I see a lot happening is that people get a podcast and they produce, you know, 50 to 100 episodes, and then they started getting approached by companies who want them to endorse their products and then you end up with this three to five minute speech at the beginning of every single cast where they talk about product or in the middle or at the end whatever the case may be this really isn't the space where I want to do that necessarily maybe if there's a real real strong resonation with what I happen to be promoting but there would have to be a lot more reach. There would have to be a lot more going on with this cast in order for that to happen. And right now, that is not the important thing. And what I'm telling you is that it is not the important thing. So if you want to be an influencer, and let's say you want to have 30,000 followers on Instagram, or 50,000, or 100,000, whatever the case may be, all those people, to you, do they matter? Because... Can you talk to 30,000 people unless you are in a room uh, and talking to people as a, a keynote guest? You can't address every single person individually. You really can't. I mean, when you have 100,000, 200,000, a million followers, there is no way to really address those people individually. Getting a comment from them is, you know, it really just sets people off. You know, and for the most part, I think a lot of that is targeted. Sometimes not. Um, I would I would hope to believe that many celebrities who have millions of people following them are authentic and that anything that they say is really done and meant to be authentic. That it isn't just someone who is monitoring their account and isn't them. That is also something that I would never want to happen. That social media will always be controlled by me personally. Uh, I won't just have a bunch of people who kind of do it behind the scenes and just write fake comments back to people in order to try and gain more momentum online. So anything that I put out is going to be put out by me inside of these spaces because that's authentic. If somebody else does it for me, if I hire somebody else down the road to do it for me, that's not really authentic. That's them posting. They might as well just create their own feed and just tie it back to mine. That would make more sense to me than having them post as me. So, and I've done it before too. I've posted as somebody else and I've written authentic content for them. It was done to an audience of somewhere between 12 and 15,000 and they didn't really care because it wasn't their main audience. So that sort of, you know, for me, it was just learning experience, something that I did in order to gain a way to interpret voice. But when you work for a company, that's kind of how it works. So having that ability or being able to do that there translated very well to a job. What I'm saying is whether you're a company or whether you're a small business owner, individual entrepreneur, or a self-brand, and whether you're inside or outside of cosplay, if your whole life is centered around pushing a number up, 
then you're basically at work because that's what work is. You know, you're you're trying to meet some sort of sales goal or you're trying to meet some sort of metric every single day, every single minute, every single week, whatever the case is. Now your whole life is going to be that and it's going to be what? So congratulations, you know, and it, it's nice when you when you have a metric, you want to be proud of that. And that's fine that you only care about gaining more. And I've I've been there before and I've built it to 125,000. It really is just, well, we just have to keep producing content so that we can keep gaining more followers and more followers and more followers. And why do we have more followers? Who cares? What 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 do you get with 300,000 people that you didn't get with 100,000 people when you don't have an offer? The answer is nothing. It's great that you have that and that you think that people will eventually reach out to you and say, oh, you're, you know, and maybe they do. Maybe you end up with a good contract because of that, because your f- social footprint is much higher and much stronger so that you become an influencer and the influencer footprint is where you get the endorsement. If you only have, say, 500 followers and you produce great content, I don't care. Actually, sometimes I'm surprised by the level of followers that people have and the content that they produce. There are a number of people that I could reference I'm not going to right now because I really don't think that this is the place where I want to call people out for not having a following, especially when we're talking about how it doesn't matter. I've also been criticized and shamed for not having enough followers to actually reach out to people to be on the show, which is interesting because as far as I know, none of these people have podcasts. None of these people have television shows. Like I, I understand that, you know, inside of your space and inside of social media that you are a thing. And when you go to cons, people recognize you and that's great. And I do want to bring a different angle to that as far as people being able to really understand what goes into cosplay and what, what creatives are doing. Honestly, if you're asked to be on a show, whether it's mine or somebody else's and you don't want to, that's fine. That's up to you. I don't put any pressure on people to be on my show. I just ask. Sometimes they ask me and that's all great. This isn't a, uh, it's, it's never a futile act of desperation to gain more followers because I will tell you that since July, when the show went live, I haven't gained one follower on Instagram as a result of being in the podcast world. I have gained some ground in the podcast world, which I'm very excited about. In terms of that translating to followers, it really doesn't. I mean, you could probably put out 300 of these and still have zero as far as a following metric online. Whatever your game may be, it doesn't necessarily matter. And you know what? There are celebrities who don't even do social media. So what are we saying? That those people are irrelevant? No, they, they have television programs. They have lives outside of being in front of their audiences, but they also may be humanitarians. They may be doing a lot of different things with their free time, with their families, with their friends, and it isn't necessarily tied to influencer marketing because they don't have to do it. They've already got their series. They've already got their television or their movie or whatever the case may be, and they really just don't want to be bogged down and bothered with social media. Now, for some celebrities, it's worked out really well. Ashton Kutcher, Will Smith, I mean, the list goes on and on of celebrities who have discovered social media and decided to use it to their advantage, but there are those who just completely are out of the game. They don't want to deal with it. Does that mean that they're not great, or does that mean, like, oh, well, I wouldn't wouldn't go with them. I wouldn't ask them to do anything because, well, they don't have any followers on Instagram. Well, that's fine. And what also, like you don't always know if you're following somebody on Instagram, how many followers they might have on some other program. You have no idea. Like they could be blowing it up on TikTok or they could have tons of influence on another platform like Snapchat. Like you just don't know. You don't know. Maybe they started on Facebook and everybody follows them there. Or maybe they have a YouTube channel. Actually, one thing I'd love to see more of is more cosplayers on YouTube because I don't see enough how-to content in that space like there's a fair amount of it but i just don't see like everybody who says that they're just not getting enough reach or they don't have this they don't have that well they're not really offering anything on youtube because video production is so difficult if we're not willing to do the hard things what are we willing to do because again this is just reach so if you don't have a play and there's no plan then what's the point and that's really what i'm saying here is if you're just posting pictures to see if you can get more people to follow you then there might need to be something else behind it. What I do appreciate are the people who maybe they don't necessarily, maybe they do, maybe they care about their following, but they post because of the creativity. They post because they are sharing and documenting an experience that they are growing as they go. And that, to me, is a great thing. 
I mean, that's why I do it. I don't, I don't do it necessarily because I need a whole bunch of likes and follows. I really don't. I just do it because I'm offering some value to the community and that at some point there should be an offer. And that's, that's what this is all about. It's about producing value. How many people follow you isn't why. That's not your why. Gaining followers isn't your why. And it's also not your worth. So how many people follow you isn't how valuable you are as an individual. How valuable you are, other people can't tell you that. Other people can't give you your worth. You know, you're not, you're not a share of stock. You can't be bought and sold. Like, that's not, you're a human being. So you can't think, or at least I wouldn't suggest that you think that this is how self-worth is determined. Because it's not. Like, do you make more money? When you have more followers, not yet. Let's hope they never get there. You go to a job, you make money there. Those people don't necessarily even know that you have any of this going on. I mean, great if they do, but most of them, most of the time, they don't. They have no idea that you're a social media influencer. You know, other people, the the random followers, the bots that follow you, and uh, you know, even uh, even getting even even if it does translate to sales, even if it is about getting these people to buy from you, you know, even if it is having a uh, a Facebook group that has a thousand people in it and six hundred of them download something from you, and you end up with a pile of money, does that really give you value and worth? No, it just means that you were really good at selling something through that funnel. That's what that means. Like, congratulations, you're a salesperson. You did a really good job of funneling people through and getting them on that baited hook and getting them into your program. And now all you have to do is keep, keep that going. So that in and of itself is just sales. So then you have to look at really what does matter. And this doesn't become as existential. It's social media. You know, we're not, we're not, this is a, this is a podcast about cosplay, ladies and gentlemen. We're not talking about existentialism necessarily. Although if you want to, that'd be great. Love to have a guest on here to talk about that. But really, what really matters? What matters? Provide information that's valuable for other people so that you're helping other people. That might matter. You know, what are, what are the, what's the expectation? You know, really, is it becoming the expectation that we all not only go to our job and have our families and live our lives, but that we actually have to have this other thing that we do part-time that, that takes up all of our weekends, all of our nights, all of our early mornings, that we constantly have to post, that we constantly have to be relevant to everyone else on the planet. You know, you have to have a YouTube channel in 2020. You have to have a podcast. You have to promote yourself. Do you? Just to gain value? Just to have worth? No, you don't. You know, if you if you want some tips on how to make this easy for you, like, okay, first you have to distance yourself from the whole value tree and from what you see online as perfect and what exists and what you need to be and what you want to be and all that good stuff like you really need to uh, take a step back from all of that so again if you want to gain followers it's real simple open up a tiktok account tiktok open up a linkedin account post and you know follow the rules figure out the game for each of those platforms you'll get more organic reach there right now than anywhere else online You'll have tons of people knowing who you are and what you do and what you're about. Those are two good places to start. But then you have to be really consistent and you have to post to the top 10 platforms that are out there right now every single day as much as you possibly can. I don't care. You know, I'm not here to tell you in this podcast how to do that, what that looks like. If you really want to do that, hey, send me an email and we can figure out what that looks like. For what I'm explaining to you and what has been explained already on other podcasts and in this space and from social media gurus is post as much as you can in those 10 spaces. Get all those get all those accounts up and running and just go post, 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 post and be relevant. That's fine. But have a message, like have a consistent approach and style to everything that you do. It can't just be random. It can't just be like stories and content from everywhere else. It has to be 80% you and 20% that other stuff. So you have to produce a lot of either written word or spoken word or photos. Like you just have to keep doing it or video. If you know where you're going with it, then it's working towards something or you're getting, you're gaining a skill, you're developing in some way. If you have 10 platforms and you post five things on each platform every day, that's a lot of content. And that's, unfortunately, that's the game. Like, this is just the game. It's the social media game. TikTok, three times a day. 
post on LinkedIn five times a day, put out 20 tweets a day, put out an Instagram post, I don't care how often, Vero once a day, Snapchat five times a day. You know, it just, it adds up very quickly. So, and then Facebook and everywhere else. So if you do that and you're consistent and, you know, let's say you do that for an entire year, I guarantee you'll see some change. You'll either see change or you'll just be banned on every one of these platforms. But I, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not responsible for the type of content that you're putting out there. We're hoping that it's both positive and informative. You do all of that. You don't overthink it. You're consistent in your appearance and your message. How about a website and a podcast in 2020? Something that I'm working towards too. I want to have a website in 2020. I used to have a website. I want to have another one. But now that I know a lot more about it, hey, let's um, let's see if we can bring that back in 2020. What does a podcast look like? What does it cost? What does it take to do? Well, if you don't want Adobe Creative Cloud, there are a lot of other choices out there uh, as far as just having like a free way to create podcasts. Now you're going to need hosting. Hosting's real simple. You can go to Bluehost or you can go to, you know, I use Buzzsprout. Try Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout, yes. Try that. It's $12 a month. Like, if really? $12? Okay, and this is for, again, this is for everything that you want to get out of your brand or out of your small business. Well, and you don't really have to. Like, you can, get a, you can get a mic and you can get a stand for the mic for like 20 bucks, And that's a one-time cost. I think my rig I bought, maybe it was like $40 for the mic. And then I got this stand for like 20 bucks, And then the, uh, the the guard and you know a few other things cables and then I got a mixing board mixing board was probably the most expensive piece but you don't actually need it I just prefer it and again this was like years ago so if you look at it over time like five years like I'm spending maybe twenty dollars a year on this podcast plus the hosting fee this year it's like a hundred dollars for the year so what I stop drinking as many beers as I shouldn't drink anyways every week like what you know like uh, you spend more money on things you don't even think about like if I drank half as much coffee as I drink I'd be able to afford a podcast so you just move things around and say well okay maybe I don't need so much caffeine but you know there, there are ways to look at this and you can start a podcast it's super easy if I can do it you know pretty much everybody can do it I enjoy doing it but that's the whole reason why I do it like if you don't enjoy doing it if it doesn't resonate with you then don't do it you know I'm not forcing you nobody's forcing you to have a podcast or a YouTube channel a podcast that you post to YouTube like nobody's forcing you to do any of these things Buzzsprout $12 a month three hours of content you can upload every single month inside of that you can get transcripts you can get all this cool stuff Again, I don't, I'm not being paid by them. I'm not, this isn't a pitch for, but, but there's a ton of other places out there. Just, you just have to look. I just prefer their hosting. It's super easy. You just drop and drag over and it works really well with the clips that I can export from, uh, from Adobe. So yeah, you just, it's, it's a system easy enough. And the website, websites are pretty easy to make a good website with a lot of interaction and a lot of scheduling and a lot of downloadability like there's uh, you can go pretty crazy with WordPress I don't recommend WordPress unless you have oh I don't know forty thousand dollars sitting around because you're going to want somebody to try and do a lot of things for you in the background with that and it's pretty tricky to use it's not user-friendly um, if you're a WordPress guru and you know a lot about HTML coding or CSS or any of that stuff that'll be really helpful if you know a lot about WordPress then go go nuts with WordPress WordPress is great for blogs, but blogs really don't exist anymore. If you want to do any sort of hosting or things like that and tie it into a bunch of stuff, it does not work very well. I would say you would have to find somebody to help you with a website if you want it to be very elaborate. Otherwise, you can get like a Weebly or a Wix or a Squarespace or anything like that and just have it hosted somewhere else and you can have it point to all of your other stuff. Probably get some sort of commerce working on it. That's the real hard part is tying it into commerce. And I'll tell you... It's no easy task to have a website tied to commerce, and it is somewhat expensive, so be prepared for that. If that's where you want to go with your brand, and that's what you want to do, if you want to sell t-shirts, Teespring, you know, there's ways to do it. But if you really want to have control over everything that you're doing, website is the way to go. Because no matter what happens, you know, your website's tried and true. Like, Buzzsprout could go away, Instagram could go away, Facebook could say, I don't want you on there anymore and kick you off. But really, if you have your own web website unless the hosting site but you can always change your hosting you know that's the way to go it is yours and it is your content and it is very easy to move around from one space to the other my my big tip 
for anybody trying to really up their game again if this is important to you or even you know for me it's not important to me but it's still a game that I want to be in even though the following doesn't matter the the content does and what you want to do is have a minimum viable quantity and quality of content again minimum viable quantity and quality if you only post once a week to Instagram great just make sure that it's enough quality that it will be what you want people to see or experience with your brand or with your business or whatever it is that you're trying to communicate. The you and the documentation have some thought process around what you post and where you post it and how often you post so that you fit your own personal minimum. I mean, maybe you don't care how many times or how random it is, but if you put up 20 stories a day and 10 tweets a day, one thing in every other space, you'd be pretty close to 40. So it wouldn't it doesn't take that much more, I guess is what I'm saying. So you you get to a you get to a threshold and a minimum pretty quickly when you're in that space. And generally most people have like a main platform that they want to shoot for and then they have all the other stuff where they just kind of post. And I can't say that I'm really active on Twitter. I probably should be a little bit more active on some of these platforms seeing as I'm, you know, putting not putting my money where my mouth is when I do things like that. Expect to see more in 2020. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm actually probably going to spend a lot less time because I think that where the time gets spent is in not reaching out and sharing your two cents with people. And I have talked about that before the dollar eighty rule, which is Gary V. But I think we all just get into a scroll hole and we just start scrolling through content and we start wasting a bunch of time, which is all fine and good. I mean, if you want to scroll through your Instagram feed, go right ahead. Like, I'm not telling you that that's a bad thing or that it's evil or that it's wrong or that you have to spend every single waking moment of your life being productive because you don't. You know, actually, this is even cosplay in in some ways has become sort of uh, it's a hobby with it's almost a jobby right? It's, it's like a hobby that's become something, some form of work for everyone in some ways. Not, f- not always, but it's, it's a level of, of fandom that we want to express, but we still want it to be fun. And really, it's, it's almost like, for me, it's the thing that I want to do, not just in my free time. It would be great to be able to have a podcast and a website and be able to offer this stuff to you full-time. Unfortunately, I can't right now because I'm still learning and producing uh, value in, in a different area. You know, I have a job. So while you have a job, do not stress yourself on the things that you do not get paid for. Your following, if it pays you or if it doesn't pay you, if it is not your job to have that following, don't worry about it. People are going to have comments. They're going to make remarks, but they don't really know you. They only know what they see and what you allow them to see. So the only person who can really know you is you, right? You're the only one who spends enough space or enough time in your own space to really understand. The whole idea of a following is that you create one, figure out your pricing, your products, your promotions, your services, and you have that thing that you want to offer to the world and to the universe that you have that audience built. Those people are there for you to share this with, and that is what you do. You just share it with them. There's no pressure to buy because these are the people who have been supporting you. So and if it isn't, if the point is just to grow to grow, well, that's a problem. And there are enough people out there also who talk about the issue with the quest for expansion and that expansion isn't always such a good thing. Being small isn't that big of a deal. Like having no following isn't that big of a deal. You just think that it is because that's kind of what people push at you. That's kind of the thought process. They want you to be on the app. So, of course, and they want you to use the app. They want you to engage with other people. So, of course, they're going to tell you that it's important to do this all the time. A lot of people who are out there talking about this in the influencer area are probably getting paid by a lot of these platforms to tell you that it's important to do all of this. I mean, what's, you know, again, your minimum viable quality and quantity of content is yours, not mine. Like, I don't care if you post once on one platform once a month, it doesn't make any difference. Like it, it just needs to work for you. But I will tell you in, in the context of being able to compete in the game of social media and the game of marketing that you have to have 
a product or a service at some point, and you do have to build an audience and you have to reach them somehow, whether it's paid or organic. That's what I'm here to help you with as we go through 2020 and as we move into the new year and as we think about the best way to create a safe place and a good space for cosplayers to share their experiences, their thoughts, expertise inside of what they love to do inside of fandom. And I will continue to bring you podcasts that hopefully give you insight as a cosplayer into the cosplay community, into marketing, and into all of the areas around that that help you grow your brand, that help you grow your following, if that really matters to you, help you monetize something that you have a passion for doing. This is Scotty B, and thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. 